few years ago talking about real estate and hearing the voice of God, uh, we need to talk to him about it too. A few years ago, a number of us, one, one fine Saturday afternoon, in fact, I think we had some showers of rain as we went, but it was mostly fine, we walked through every urban area of Valdivis, a number of us, I don't know, probably about a dozen of us, some of you were with us, you did that little walk with us, and we prayed as we went. If it rained, we'd stop in a gazebo and pray. If it wasn't raining, we'd keep walking. We walked through Settlers Hills, we walked through uh, River Guns, we, we walked and we prayed. We prayed that God would give us these people into His kingdom, that we would have influence with them. And, and, and what, what a great thing. And we just prayed in all the subdivisions as we went. And it was a twofold blessing right here. Uh, maybe, maybe threefold. Number one, we were getting fitter as we walked. <laughs> Number two, we were talking to God about the expanding of his kingdom. Number three, I think we've seen some lessons from that. I think people, people that come, some of you folk have come and you didn't know that's why you came. Because we were strolling around the neighborhood praying for you to come. Didn't even know your name. Stop outside your house, pray. These people, Lord, send them to our church. And then you thought, wondered why you came. We were praying for you, praying for you as we walked through these urban areas. Walking on the land. It was on Tuesday, the 15th of July, and today is Sunday the what? Maybe, you're not sure what it is, are you? It's got out of bed, okay? Right. Yeah. Well, it's about the 18th. Uh, but on Tuesday, the 15th of July, 1997, I walked onto this campus for the very first time. And I've got to tell you, it was a derelict campus. It wasn't a campus. It was a worm farm. And it sort of had a little bit more junk on it than next door has, and you might note they're tearing all these down next door because the earth moving equipment is coming soon to make streets and cul-de-sacs and houses will be coming. We'll stroll across that land, pray there, where people are coming. So I strolled on this land in, uh, on the 15th, Tuesday the 15th of July 1997 and the Spirit of God spoke into my spirit and he said, he gave me this verse, every place you put your foot, I'll give you that land. He said, well I'm here Lord. He said, well that's old covenant, so you need to pray about it. So I prayed. Lord, give us this land, you know, give us this land for your kingdom purposes. And so I spoke to Ross McCamish, the realtor, and said, what's this land going to cost us? He said, you're interested. I said, very interested. He said, that's eight and a half acres, and it'll cost you $375,000. And of course, as a church in 1997, we didn't have a cent. We had no money. Talk about raising up from 37 grand to 41, as, as, as right when you've been generous. We had nothing. And, and uh, so I said to the Lord as I walked up and down on this property, I said, Lord, what am I going to say to Ross McCamish? And he said, uh, say to him, vendor finance, interest-free for two and a half years. So I said to Ross, uh, he said, how are you going to play? I said, well, we have no money. And he said, you think it's a God thing, don't you? And I said, yes, I do, as I'm talking to God. I'm talking to him, which you can do. That's, that's a crazy thing, isn't it? I'm talking to God and talking to Ross. He doesn't know I'm talking to God at the same time, but he has a suspicion I have. <laughs> I said, how about Bengal Finance? It was free for two and a half years. And he laughed, like you just did. And he said, that's crazy talk. He said, but I think it's serious, so I'll do it. But, uh, and he, and he, within 48 hours, he got back to me. He said, the vendor has said, yes, as long as you come up. That was July. That was, a, that, that was, that was July. And he said, as long as you come up with $40,000 by the 1st of September. How long have we got there? You do your math. It's not long, he said. I went back to the church and I told them this wonderful story like I just told you. And they laughed. But they came up with the 40 grand by the 1st of September. Just like that. Now listen to this quote about vendor finance. I think it's fascinating. It's from a book called Building Wealth Through Investment Property. And some of you are into that, right? Some of us try it and don't do as well as others, but hey, if you're into it, go for it. Vendor finance, it says in this book, is almost non-existent in Australia. In a few cases, the vendor will carry back a first or second mortgage, but be wary. A lower interest rate is usually coupled... we got the interest free. A lower interest rate is usually coupled with a higher purchase, but we got the 375 grand. In Australia, less than 1% of loans are vendor financed. we got the interest free. We got it for 375 grand, and then, then four years ago we sold off about four acres for 800 grand. And that enabled us to build the children's ministry centre debt free and to hire staff. And we're not done with that because God put us in such a great position because we had the cheek to ask Him for the land that we placed our feet on. Uh, and, and 
So he says, every, every place you can set your foot. But you need to ask. James 4, 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Some of you aren't getting what you need to get and where God gives you the opportunity to get because you're not asking, seeking and knocking. Yeah. Ask and seek and knock. Yeah. State your claim. State your claim on life by stepping into the opportunity that God gives you. That's what he's saying here to these people. And, 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 and I, I looked on this derelict property. And it was derelict. It was a mess. There was so much stuff on here. We had to cut it to the tip and it just kept on going. In fact, we're still cutting the tip every now and again. Something from the previous civilization rises to the surface. And, uh, and Rob Jowell will, will find it and, and cut it off somewhere. You see, but I, I think about walking on putting my footprint on this derelict property. And I, I, I could see, because God was speaking, I was in connection with God. And he showed me what I couldn't tell him with lawns and gardens and buildings and people. Because it doesn't matter how good it is with lawns and gardens, if there are no people, it's a waste of space. And I can see the people coming and I put my foot, I'm so glad I put my footprint here. I'm so glad that you who joined me put your footprints here on this land in 1997 and we claimed it for Jesus Christ and for the kingdom and for his work. And I'm so glad that you today have put your footprint on this land. And I'm so glad that whoever you are, you might be your first time here today, your footprint is now on this land. And together we can go forward and we can do things together with this land because Jesus Christ has given us this, this, this land. Where have you put your foot? I'll give it to you. Promise number three. The promise of courage for God's calling on your life. <laughs> I've, I've had a number of people into my study during the week and they're processing God's call on their life. And I think when you truly get God's call in your life, initially that's going to freak you out. If it doesn't, you probably hadn't heard what he was saying to you. He probably said, we'll probably freak you out. But listen to this, Joshua 1.5. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. When you follow God's calling, which, which days were those? Oh. All the days of your life. Got some scriptures we all want to read together here. Here we go. You want to read that up here? 2 Timothy 1, 7. It's coming up. Here we go. Let's read this one together. For God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. Oh, now you're on roll. Let's go to the next one. Romans 1, 16. Is that up there? There it is. Let's go. Here we go. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God. Salvation for all who believe. So, so it, it's a kind of boldness that God's putting in you. If He's calling you something for, for these uh, characters to take the promised land, uh, for you to live the abundant life, well, well then He's going to give you the courage for that. So be bold, be courageous, have a go, step out. Promise number four, His promised presence. Now listen to this, Joshua 1 9. The Lord your God what? will be with you. That's why you can be strong and courageous. Because the very God who is creator is going to be with you uh, once you give your life to Jesus Christ. And in case you've missed it, uh, you heard in Joshua 1 9, the Lord your God will be with you. Listen to it again in Joshua 1 5. As I was with Moses, so I also will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's going to stay with you. So, well, that's just back there in the Old Testament. Does it apply today? Hebrews 13 5 and 6. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can human beings 